Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bob Lassard. I'm with the Division of Behavioral Health, and this is the Centralized Data System 2017 System Updates and Enhancements. We are recording this uh, presentation and have muted all lines so that we don't have any uh, feedback from any of the individuals. There may be a time for uh, questions at the end of the initial presentation. Let us get started then with this set of updates. Okay, where's my... This is a, our suggested timeline for the updates for the CDS and EBS. Since I've used those initials a couple of times, let's review that. Centralized data system is the CDS, which we're talking about the July updates. EBS is the electronic billing system, which we are implementing during July. It's a go-live period. Currently, the EBS is, has all of our contract information for the regions and sub-programs of the Division of Behavioral Health. You will see the results of those on the uh, new encounter window and on TADS. If you do not see the services that you have as a contract with either the division directly or through your regions on either one of those screens, please contact us uh, so that we can make sure that you have the correct services on your screens. On July 24th, we will install all the CDS updates except for our Medicaid feed, and we'll discuss that a little bit more in a couple of minutes. During the period, uh, we will ask that the regions and programs work together to transition from the current capacity spreadsheet to the CDS capacity spreadsheet and also the waitlist functionality from the uh, spreadsheet into CDS. We would like to have that completed during the first week of September with full capacity and waitlist entries into the CDS. During August, the first 10 days of August, we anticipate receiving from the, to the regions, from the programs, the turnaround documents, TADS, through the CDS, which will feed into the electronic billing system. This is the first time that this will occur. We anticipate that there will be some challenges for people along the way. The DHHS staff will be uh, available and ready to assist where we can. During August, we will begin a Medicaid eligibility fee to the centralized data system. We will have more information about that coming in late July or the second week of August. These are the trainees. You are currently on the Wednesday uh, training. Uh, we have a capacity and reporting updates uh, tomorrow from uh, All of these trainings are being recorded and will be available in the system documentation and training site of the centralized data system. Let's talk about some of the uh, enhancements. There, we are adding to the waitlist uh, window when you add a consumer to the waitlist. The items in red have, have been changed slightly. We will now ask you to uh, identify the date in which federal interim services are delivered to a consumer. We are continuing the engagement services and adding additional client engagement services, such as uh, whatever you see on the screen there. I want to caution everybody, the wait list is for people who, after they have had an assessment and have an assessment and are waiting to enter the level of care as appropriate after the assessment has been done. The wait list is now visible to all 
programs or will be visible after the 24th of July so that you can add, for instance, the federal interim services once you have admitted a person and it may be a couple of days later before you can uh, actually uh, acknowledge the service delivery. This will appear, as you see, on the consumer tabs. Also new to the consumer tabs will be the contact log. Currently, only the uh, housing and family services programs use the contact log. However, we anticipate more people will want to use the contact log as they maintain their wait list through the CDS. Removing from the wait list, we have continued the drop-down menu for wait list removal reason. We believe that you should be able to determine uh, any one of these reasons for a person to have been removed from the wait list. We love to see that people are admitted to the program. Some additional changes in the CDS during the next uh, few days will include the ad addition of Nebraska vocational rehabilitation to the to the discharge screens for referral source. Another change we are making is in the discharge type, and that is change in funding. We've had many people describe that this is one of the major reasons that they move people around, including their uh, change in Medicaid uh, eligibility. So now we have this as a drop down in the discharge type. Also new is the destination at discharge. We have placed in their home no further services. That would indicate that the person has completed their uh, uh, treatment and are ready to go on their own. I mentioned earlier that we will have a feed to the Division of Behavioral Health. This feed will be for our shared services in programs that are Medicaid enrolled. As you can see, there are a large number of shared services between Medicaid and the Division of Behavioral Health. We will show you briefly how this will be done. The shared services will be an alert for Medicaid enrolled service providers at admission, authorization, at the continued stay review, and at the continued care review. Additionally, it will be up here on the tabs. Here is an authorization that is denied solely because of the Medicaid criteria. This consumer is Medicaid eligible on the date of the requested service. On the tabs, the Medicaid alert will look somewhat like this. Notice that there is no authorization and that the consumer has uh, Medicaid eligibility. We'll describe in more detail uh, in the trainings in late July or the second week in August how this will function with uh, the programs. We have chosen to make some changes with the crisis response as reporting, uh, beginning with July 1st, actually, you are requested to report all crisis responses as an hourly or portion of an hour to a quarter hour. PADS reporting is also going to change slightly. We have noted a number of times that people have requested more units of service than are permitted. Therefore, we are locking down the total service detail 
as you can see in this example from our test data, that while there are only 12 units of service permitted in this authorization, 16.92 units of service have been requested. This happens to be a community support SUD pad that we are using, and we are using the 12 units and are capable of responding to the 15-minute units and the one-year authorization. As you know, there is some confusion about how many units can be requested in a month on the 15-minute units. That number is 11. When you go to 12 units having been provided, you then have a one month authorization. So for a year, you have 12 authorized units. It's confusing. Just know that we are ready to assist you in uh, putting your tasks together when you have both the 15 minute and the monthly uh, unit designation. You will also note down on the bottom, the last record, no authorization for this month. So that authorization expired some time ago before the beginning of the month. And also notice that the service detail is blank. You can't request. In the future, you will not be able to request a TAD for a service that was not authorized during the time period of the TAD. We are also going to begin our update on the capacity and waitlist data entry forms. Forms have been revised from that which was originally uh, developed for the CDS. Uh, they will be available to all the regions and providers on July 24th. Uh, you are requested to discuss and begin using the system in August. Regions and providers can transition during the month of August from the waitlist and capacity spreadsheets that are uh, used now to the CDS capacity and waitlist system. We do request that all uh, the transitions are made final by the first week in September, and we request that priority populations must be uh, put into the waitlist system, and we invite programs to use the waitlist system for all others. Here is an example of capacity available uh, for an agency. Once you establish your agency capacity, which is the left-hand most circled capacity available, Total agency capacity for the services that will be identified on the left-hand side. This will be total capacity of the agency. The total contracted service capacity from any region will be less than the capacity available of the total agency capacity. Total agency capacity includes all funding sources, whether private or public. As you can see there, this particular program has three regions that it is serving with its uh, uh, facility. This happens to be the Sunrise Place in Norfolk, as you can see the provider location. The week ends on Sunday. so. From Monday through Sunday, we have identified those weeks in a drop-down menu for the next several years. We anticipate that there will be some discussion between regions and programs on how to uh, develop the capacity available. Uh, the regional program administrators and their staff are available to discuss this capacity and utilization system during August.
we know that capacity may change over the years. Capacity will be, once you establish capacity, the capacity from the week one will appear in week two. If there's no change in capacity, it will appear in week three. You won't have to redo capacity unless, after working with your network or fiscal program, uh, a contract change is made. Whether or not there is an increase or decrease in agency staffing may affect your capacity or changes in funding, especially from other funding sources, either private or public. You will be required to enter weekly your utilization. We start with the total agency location capacity used. We also ask that you identify the capacity used for each of your contracted agents, regions. This appears daunting right at the moment, but I can assure you that this is much easier than what we had originally, and it will help programs to manage their uh, capacity and utilization, as well as for the state to see and regions to share information across so that we can uh, get people into services more quickly. We are also preparing a guidance document for several of our uh, variables. The reason for discharge, we've added now the change in funding. Destination at discharge, both the admission and discharge referral source. For living situation, for employment status, health insurance, funding and or payment source, and for federal interim services. This guidance document will be available on the system documentation and training site, as will a recording of this presentation. To get to that, check on your name in the upper right-hand corner of the CDS homepage. You see the arrow up there. Then click on system documentation and training. We have placed a very large number of videos, tutorials, and system documentation on this page for your use. Please, before you call one of us, see if the system documentation and training site has the answer that you need. If you don't find it available on the system documentation and training site, we encourage you to call our friends at the Orion Help Desk. You can contact them uh, through that same portal using your name and then contact the Help Desk. You can email them directly at support at orionhealthcare.com or you can give them a holler on the telephone. If you contact the Help Desk, please, and you're having trouble with an encounter, use the encounter number. Do not send PHI over the uh, email system. We encourage you also to ask questions of your agency and regional super users. Both Heather and myself are available, though our schedules are very tight and we may not be able to get back to you as soon as you need an answer with a question other than through the Orion Help Desk or the agency super users. And again, I encourage you to use the system documentation and training web page for any answers or questions that you may have. You'll also see that we have our uh, Heather and my email address on here. You can always type us a, uh, a quick note and say I'm having in trouble with understanding uh, a variable and it's drop down and we can give you a holler back. I am going to open up the line at this time and see if there are any questions. I certainly, uh, we're going to look at our, we'll look at 
information that will be available. Um, the guidance documents will be available on the uh, documentation and training website in the very near future. Uh, hopefully we can get those up before July 24th. Uh, they will be appear there after quickly. The capacity report, Stephanie, will begin on July 24th. Uh, we encourage you to work with your uh, region to discuss what capacity to place in the capacity uh, variables uh, by the service function that you perform. Uh, you can then uh, discuss how you want to uh, capture your utilization with your region. Uh, I'm reading from the chat section of the uh, program. Uh, that is open to all for uh, if you have questions, please give us a uh, uh, type it into the chat section of the uh, webinar. This will help us to uh, answer your questions in future training meeting, trainings. At this point in time, at this point in time, I can tell you that this is the uh, updates for July. If you have questions, we're going to leave the uh, chat box open for uh, about 10 minutes. Uh, please type your questions into the chat box and thank you for your uh, participation in this. For those of you still on the line, more uh, information about the federal uh, uh, guidelines uh, forthcoming in either the the manual, the provider manual, or uh, in the system documentation and training portion of the website. We've had a question about use of the wait list. If you don't have a wait list, obviously you won't need to use the wait list section. It's generally designed for our high level uh, treatment services and uh, like residential or the uh, day services that have uh, a wait list. If you don't have a wait list, you won't need it. However, you will be using the capacity and utilization system. 